Welcome yeah. back, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 good to be home. And we are delighted that Swagoo has sort of pried himself away from Fortnite too. I'm just glad y'all sent me by the money. You know how. Get the bag. Get the bag. Rub it off on you. I'm glad we're in a good mood because that's only going to last about a minute and a half here. Let's get right to it. Here's what happened last night at Lambeau Field. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers ready to go in a very important divisional showdown against Matthew Stafford and the Lions. Very first play from scrimmage. Tricky Lions, Dan. Yeah, they come out aggressive. A beautiful flea flicker. Get Galladay down from the left side of the field to the right. Outstanding throw by Matthew Stafford. Lions start fast. Yeah, and that is now Stafford has more passing yardage against the Packers than any player in history passing Fran Tarkenton. But one of the themes of the night, they would wind up settling for a field goal. So it's 3-0. Let's go all the way to the fourth quarter. The Packers are down nine. It's a two-score game in the fourth quarter. Third and ten is the down and distance. Rodgers is sacked, but the flag comes out. Illegal hands to the face on Trey Flowers. Take another look. I can't believe that they made this call. Hands right on the shoulder pads. Flowers obviously just grabbing, driving forward. He does it all the time. He had never been called for that penalty in his career. Meanwhile, that sets up this. Rodgers for Alan Lazard. Pulls it in from the touchdown. You see the nice view from Pylon Cam. So now it's a two-point game as a direct result of that call. Ensuing Lions drive. Stafford going to be looking for Marvin Jones Jr. Swagger, let's look at this closely. Should this be pass interference? Absolutely not in real time. Like I, I know everybody gets enamored with, oh, this is this is a challengeable play. But when you're going 100 miles an hour, no, that's not enough. Contact. Oh, I can tell from Dan's face that. he disagrees. We're going to argue about that in a moment. But then let's get to this ensuing Packer drive. Again, they're down two points. Five minutes to play. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he can still do that. Takes off and runs 12 yards to the 49. So the Packer drive is alive. A minute 45 to go. Again, it's a third down play. Rodgers back to throw, and as he buys time, you will see the flag come out, and it's the same call on the same player. This is an, another example of a player doing something that he does all the time that is not a flag, yet the official miss seeing it, seeing it incorrectly and throwing a terrible flag in a crucial moment. And there's just no other way to describe it except it decides the game because it leads to this. All the Packers have to do is run the clock down to two seconds and let Mason Crosby kick the game-winning field goal. Let's talk. They saw something different than what actually happened. Nah, I didn't think uh, hands to the chest was a penalty. I thought hands to the face, but I had him right here in the chest. Second time I changed it to right here. I don't think that was a penalty, but they did, so. All right, so the, the Cleet Blakeman, who you saw there, making the announcements of the officials. He was the head official last night, and here's what he said. He said the umpire threw both of them. The last one was really the one I've discussed with him. Basically, it's for illegal use of the hands, hands to the face foul. To be a foul, we basically need some forceful contact that's prolonged to the head and neck area of the defender. So in his mind, he had him pinned back, it was prolonged, and that's what created the foul. Look, I've been doing this job almost 30 years. I hate these shows. I, I, I hate the shows where we're going to sit and talk about the officiating, but there is no choice because this was a critical game. The entire country watched it. It stood alone, and these calls go a long way towards deciding the outcome. Swagoo, the floor is yours. First of all, as a defensive lineman, it's disheartening to see that, right? Because a part of it is referees being on edge about illegal plays when it comes to the line of scrimmage. But also, Greeny, I have to put this in a little bit of perspective for people, and I know we look at Trey Flowers – we look at pass interference. We think about the Saints call. This has been happening in the NFL. And now the whole response to it is because replay was implemented. So everybody expects every single call to be right. Are there remedies? Absolutely. But when I was playing in the league, they miss calls like this all the time. And nobody was outraged about it. The, the league... The referees put themselves in this position to be highly scrutinized because they decided to review and replay certain plays. And when you get them wrong and people, everybody's going to count it to losing the game, right? And now you have this situation with the Detroit Lions where it's two times now that people are pointing to calls that specifically decided the outcome. That's the issue that lies in here. But I'm from the old school NFL where they tell you, hey, man, you got to play through that. You got to win the game. What yeah, do you think? I, I don't see it that way. Um... 
Let me, give me a camera. All right, you th listen. Owners, I'm talking to you. You don't have a problem. You have an epidemic. Your product is slowly being ruined by a third party that has no consequence to their actions. And you may not pay a lot of attention to social media, but you should, because not thousands of people, not tens of thousands of people, but millions of people are unhappy right now. And unhappy people don't spend money. America's favorite sport at times is becoming unwatchable because of bad officiating. And I can't fix it, and Greeny can't fix it, but you can. Shad Khan, you can. Jerry Jones, you can. Mr. Kraft, you can fix it. And it's not an October 2020 fix. It's not a 2020 fix. It's an October 15th, 2019 morning fix. Your product is being ruined. You need to fix this now. That's the reality of this situation. We can no longer come on shows after a really good football game and have to talk about the bad officiating. The Detroit Lions fans and team should not have to go, oh, we should have played better. When we grew up, it wasn't about, we used to always have coaches tell us, ah, don't let the officials, they don't impact the football game. They're impacting too many football games. And I'm telling you, fans are sick of it. I, I so appreciate you know, your passion and your emotion here. What is the answer is the question. People will hear you say the owners need to do something. Do you have something in mind? What could they do to address this that quick? Listen, today you can implement every time a flag is thrown, there's somebody up in a booth. It's almost like college football. You either confirm or overturn that flag. That's how college football handles tar targeting. If they throw that flag for Trey Flowers last night, hands to the face, someone in the booth immediately can go, I can confirm that or overturn that right now. It's, it's timeless. You don't have to waste time on it. But we can't consistently go, hey, guys, we're sorry we were wrong. Final thought. You lose, you lose something with that, though. And we're in that landscape now where you lose the expectation for everything to be right. And that's been the biggest argument. I'm with you, Dan, as a football player. It's costing games. We thought, we thought about the Saints and the Rams last year and, and how that derived everything. But at, at the same time, the thing that made this game so great was the fact that you did have flubs and mess-ups and things weren't perfect. So it's, it's a fine line between that. Look, uh, we, we will spend a lot more time on this today. I want to get on to some other things, but it should be pointed out that when someone like Dan, who loves this game as much as anyone I've ever met in my entire life, is this upset. When someone like Jim Nance, who is as respected a voice as there is in any sport, in all of sports, is basically pleading on the air during a game for one play that doesn't have a flag thrown, I think we have reached the level where we have a really serious problem. We'll have more on it as we go. Meanwhile, good baseball game last night. Al, let's go for there. Yeah, great.